millennial cops are entering the police force. <laughs> One of the ladies I work with, she's constantly, you know, as a cop, uh, I am a big guy, I like to lift weights. Uh, if you ever see me running after somebody and you happen to see that site, hit them with your car because they're wanted for a serious crime. <laughs> I mean, this is not foot pursuit material is what I'm saying, right? I mean, downhill, we got a good shot at it, right? Stopping will be a problem. <laughs> oh, you guys are good. I'm gonna switch it up here because you guys like that. Well, I'm gonna, this is what we're gonna do. I didn't know I was gonna talk about this, but we're gonna talk about it. Millennial cops are entering the police force. <laughs> I'm gonna say it one more time. Millennial cops are entering the police force. We were reading reports one night. It was a DUI report. And it was nothing but emojis. So like, what is this? The other officer's like, what are you talking about, Sarge? Drunk emoji, drunk emoji, get to the jail, poop emoji, poop emoji. <laughs> well, I guess it's okay then. <laughs> the funny thing is a lot of these guys and gals, they don't wanna drive normal cop cars, you know, like Interceptors and Tahoes. They wanna drive Priuses. <laughs> but Priuses that are only battery powered. Can you imagine somebody calling 911? There's been a terrible accident. Send help. I can't, Sarge. I haven't recharged yet. I haven't recharged yet. <laughs> they try to do a roadblock. People just like kick the car out of the way. <laughs> My favorite time of the year to be a cop is Halloween time because you see the craziest stuff. And uh, you know, it, it comes at you, you gotta deal with it. This last Halloween, I'm driving down the boulevard and there's a lady on the corner dressed up like a white cotton ball. <laughs> so I was like, what? <laughs> what are you? She's like, me? <laughs> I was like, yeah, you, what are you? She's like, I am a loofah. <laughs> Are you a dirty officer? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> like good and I'm like you know I realize with all the stuff going on with cops around the country that we got to be proactive right in building rapports with citizens you know what I'm saying so I'm like I got you sister I grabbed the strobe lights I turned them all on I grabbed my PA and I'm all she's like oh my goodness I didn't know we were gonna make money I got you that's the scariest thing you've ever seen I sure hope he knows where the end of the stage is. <laughs> Timber! We got a patron down in the front row, patron down. <laughs> Mexican down too, Mexican. <laughs> so I'm into it, right? I got this side of the street. <laughs> this side of the street. <laughs> Not paying attention. There comes my supervisor driving around the corner. <laughs> I know, right? I didn't know what to do. So I tased the loofah. Twice. <laughs> That's a little too much clapping back there, sir. He should have done it third time, third time. <laughs>
All right, you guys get a good looking crowd tonight. My name is Vinny Montez. Uh, I hail from Denver, Colorado. I'm uh, from a non-traditional Mexican family. There's only four of us in my family. My 69-year-old mother is the ringleader of the family, five foot tall, less than 100 pounds, just pure lightning in her veins, all right? When I was a kid, I could come home with a compound fracture. She'd immediately revert back to the last time I was mouthing off. See me call, and God punishes without a belt. <laughs> Where's the love? Not here, mijito, not here. I mean, Hito means my son, my little son, although I'm not little anymore. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I'll tell you what, uh, my mom, uh, she's always telling me weird things. She's like, Nicole, you're getting a little bit too big. You know, you need to slow down and not be eating so much. I'm like, all right. But then the next thing she tells me, she's like, pero come over tonight, we're gonna have enchiladas, tostadas, and tamales. <laughs> That's gonna work on the midsection there, mother. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way right now. Uh, I'm actually, I'm a cop currently right now. I've been a cop for the last 21 years. It's a lot of fun. Uh, thing about it is though, when I became a cop, uh, went to the academy in 97, became a cop in 98, uh, I didn't sign up to deal with bears, all right? That's all I'm saying right now. This lady called 911, she's like, there's a bear in my kitchen. There's a bear in my kitchen. I'm like, that's my problem? <laughs> I mean, if it was a brown bear, right? I could do something about it. I'd be like, what are you Que pasó? Que rollo? <laughs> they got any enchiladas in the freezer or what? Eh? <laughs> but that wasn't the situation, right? So my partner comes out of the station, right? The night that we got this call, I was paired up with one of the SWAT guys, all right? I'm not a SWAT guy, but he was. And he comes out of the station, he's all, yeah, bro, we're gonna go get the bear, bro. <laughs> and you know, he's that one cop that just has that swagger, yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> So Captain America and I are going to get this bear. <laughs> and we're going up the canyon and he's in the passenger seat. I'm driving lights and sirens. We're going with this call. This lady's calling 911. They're updating us on dispatch. And he's just in the passenger seat. <laughs> so we get to the call. And before I could stop him, he gets out of the car. He grabs the shotgun. He's all <laughs> I'm all, dude, you cannot shoot a bear with a shotgun, bro. The Subaru drivers will not put up with that, bro. <laughs> Any Subaru drivers in here tonight? Shut up, nobody cares, nobody cares. So before I could stop Captain America, he runs into the house. I wish I was making this part up, but this is completely true. I'm standing outside. This is the very next thing that I hear. Uh, here, bear, 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 bear. <laughs> hey, bear, where you at, bear? <laughs> this dude is in there like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> I'm gonna find a bear. I'm gonna find a bear. <laughs> I just want to point out at this point in time in the show, I was still outside the house, okay? Because I know better. My mom raised a smart kid. And I'm thinking to myself, what's the SWAT guy in there doing? Like searching the house all tactically and everything? He's gonna round the corner in the kitchen, come face to face with the bear and be like, Hey, boo-boo, got a picnic basket! <laughs> the bear and I had a lot in common. He came in the house, he obtained the food, and left said house. <laughs> I want to let you know, super drivers, it was okay. Nobody got hurt during the scenario. Just want to make sure you're not going to come up here and yell at me. But speaking about super drivers... <laughs> The only reason I give them a hard time is because every time I gotta go somewhere, there they are blocking the fast lane. 
<laughs> Where I work, we had a riotous situation involving a bunch of Subaru drivers. <laughs> They're like, I say protest, protest. Protest, protest. <laughs> and the bosses were like, you know what? We're gonna call out the riot team. We're gonna shoot them with a bunch of pepper balls. And I'm like, why? That's a good waste of pepper balls. <laughs> if you're gonna shoot them with anything, shoot them with gluten balls. Be like. <laughs> gluten gurney! <laughs> but then one of the Subi Nation would come out, wait a minute. I'm the leader of the Subi Nation. <laughs> it's the assistant leader right here. <laughs> I got the antidote for the gluten, don't worry. I'm prepared. Just a little essential peppermint oil underneath the eyes. <laughs> See those reflexes? <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Uh, talk a little bit about my mom. I told you about her. Uh, <clears throat> my mother, like I said, five foot tall, less than 100 pounds, just pure lightning in her veins. But she's a lady that wants to know what's going on out there on the streets. She's like, Mikha, I'm going on a ride along with you. <laughs> really? <laughs> I need to know what's going on. I don't trust the news. I want to see for myself. But every time she rides along with me, she gets way too involved in the situation. <laughs> the last time she rode along, we got called to a park, a skate park, where a bunch of kids were being pushed around by a drunk guy. So we get there, and I go up to the dude, and I'm like, hey, let's go to detox, bro. No ticket, no jail. What do you say? He says, let me tell you something, fat boy. I'll kick your butt, fat boy. My mother hears this from my patrol car. <laughs> she grabs the PA. Mijo, you need some backup? <laughs> then this dude starts it on my mom. He's like, who's that old Mexican hag in the car? <laughs> Don't worry, you don't know my mom without missing a beat. Mijo, give me the green light. I'll cut him with my straight razor. <laughs> I'm working up here. Big guy like me, I'm 225 pounds is what I am. That was a little too much, sir. <laughs> I could take it, though. I could take it. <laughs> it's one of the Subaru drivers. I know it. <laughs> Forrester. <laughs> Tully rack on top. <laughs> I learned a hard lesson recently. Fellas, pay attention. One more time, fellas. Take note. <laughs> so it's the middle of the night. Let me paint you the picture. It's three o'clock in the morning. I get up to go to the bathroom. I handle my business. I don't turn on a single light because I am a professional. <laughs> I'm on my way back to bed and from downstairs, I hear crash kaboom. So I stop and I listen because there is criminal activity afoot. <laughs> from the bed, I hear, babe, babe, did you hear that? Did you hear that? To which I replied, shh, <laughs> <laughs> And about 10 seconds of silence went by. And then I heard, did you just shush me? <laughs> And 
this house. You don't sus me in this house. But I couldn't see her face, but in my mind, that's what she was doing. And I'm like, you want to have an argument right now? I'm thinking I might have to kill somebody. So I got tired of it. I walked down the stairs. I was looking for the burglar. Because if I would have found him, I'd have been like, sir, upstairs, first door on your left. <laughs> Things haven't been the same since. Uh, my goodness. You guys are an awesome crowd. Uh, I don't take myself too seriously because I don't think you can. I got into comedy because uh, I wanted to protect my mental health. We see a lot of things and I can share and twist them with you. Uh, and it's important to me to keep that mental health strong. And I don't wanna to wanna to be one of those jaded cops at the end of a 20 or 30 year career. But the best example of this is I love it when people are quick witted. We had a fight at one of the colleges. I showed up, I get out of my car, there's these two young guys standing on the corner. So I said, hey, bro, did you guys see the fight over here? Young guy's like, dude, totally saw what happened, bro. Totally saw what happened, okay? <laughs> I'm like, okay, you overachiever. <laughs> can you write me a written statement? He's like, no. I can send you a text message? <laughs> So I don't want to get into it with this kid. So I give him my phone number and 20 minutes later, he sends me a text message. Hey, Popo. <laughs> I ain't no rap, Popo. <laughs> That's not the bad part. On busy nights when I'm working, this kid still sends me random text messages. <laughs> Hey, Popo. <laughs> We're about to leave the bar. Where are you guys at right now? <laughs> 30 minutes later. Hey, Popo, we made it home, but we're out of food. Can you make a pizza run? <laughs> you can't get mad at that. You cannot get mad at that. That is genius. Dude, when I see that guy again, I'm gonna be like, high five, bro, that is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. You're going to jail for sure with that. All I'm saying, for sure, he's a Subaru driver. That's it. Tomorrow is 420. <clears throat> And I am a cop, right? And where I work, it's actually legal. I'm not a proponent of it. I don't believe in it, but I have to work with it, right? <clears throat> Last 420, I decided to work the event because it was overtime and they needed cops to do it. So I showed up and I was like, how hard could it be to work a 420 event, right? Bunch of stoners hang out, should be pretty chill. So I get there and it's three o'clock in the afternoon and there's 10,000 people on the field and it is just a cloud of smoke. <laughs> what I didn't realize is you could get a contact high. <laughs> More importantly, I didn't realize is if I get a contact high, I become Mexican Tickle Me Elmo. <laughs> Dispatch start calling me on the radio. Vinny, can we get a status you in there? <laughs> Dispatch, go ahead. <laughs> Anybody want to take me to Taco Bell right now? <laughs> Everybody's looking right. Is he laughing? Is he laughing? I'm probably the only person that could get away with that joke here. It's all right. 
uh, one of the ladies I work with, she challenged me. She's like, you know what? If you're serious about getting in shape, you should try yoga. And I was like, yoga? You can't challenge me to do something and think I won't do it, all right? So I, I did it. I went to the yoga studio. I signed up. Problem was, I accidentally signed up for hot power <laughs> yoga. <laughs> and if you don't know what hot power yoga is, let me tell you. They put you in there for 90 minutes in a floor with just wood floor and stuff like that. And then they turn the thermostat all the way up. You cannot challenge me to do anything in this world without me preparing. So on my way to hot power yoga, I stopped at Taco Bell and got my usual. <laughs> I love that guy back there. He's my new friend. <laughs> So I'm in this class and we're about 45 minutes into it, right? And I'm in downward dog at this point. <laughs> and you think I'm sweating now. <laughs> Lake Havasu was forming underneath me. <laughs> and the funny part about it, there was a really cute girl next to me and Lake Havasu was getting closer <laughs> and closer. <laughs> Misty, the instructor, was like shaking her head throughout the class. <laughs> I was already mad because they don't make yoga mats for fat people like me, okay? There was no cup holder for my Diet Pepsi. <laughs> About an hour into the class, I hear this. <laughs> Misty focuses on me at this point in time. <laughs> they put me in the final position in the final pose, which is child's pose huddled up in a little ball. <laughs> Y'all know what a Jake break sounds like when it lets loose? <laughs> Misty's hair blew back like it was Hiroshima. <laughs> People were running for the room. <laughs> Point is, I'm no longer welcome at hot power yoga. <laughs> oh, goodness, that's awesome. I got any Latinos in here, my raza? Aquí estoy, orale. <laughs> Two people, all right. Mm. We always got backup. Quick shout out to the kitchen. Que arroyo, all right. Tu sabes, orale. Now don't tighten up on me here, okay? We're having a good time, all right? I love my Mexican people, all right? I love my raza. But we make it way too easy to get pulled over. <laughs> One of my cousins passed me and I was like, what? <laughs> he leaned out the window, he's like, hey, what the are you pulling me over for? I'm like, you're not familiar with MPC, Mexican Probable Cause? <laughs> he's like, what is that, Holmes? If like, I'm like, if your name appears in your car in any location in old English font, <laughs> That is Mexican probable cause. <laughs> if instead of a throbbing bass, I hear a throbbing accordion, <laughs> MPC, baby. <laughs> and last but not least, if the tires and the rims cost more than the actual vehicle you were driving, <laughs> That is Mexican probable cause. <laughs> oh, I love that joke. <laughs> because it's true. I love my people, but it's true. <laughs> I just want to, like, before I retire as a cop, like, I hope to get 30 years in, so I got, like, nine more. But I just like to, I just like to take my car out one night, <clears throat> roll the seat back just a little bit so they couldn't see who was in the car. <laughs> 
They just go screaming down the road, right? And just be like, they'd be like, ah, now an emergency. Yes. One of your cars is missing, apparently been stolen down the road. Because I just have Mer Mexican music blaring out of it. <laughs> Soy la policía. <laughs> All right, I want to do this one thing with you guys because it made me feel so good recently. Um, I'm part of this group called HTB Humanize the Badge. There's a bunch of officers around the country uh, that try to humanize the badge, and you know, people know that not all cops are bad out there. And uh, <clears throat> we went to Las Vegas not long ago to speak with some of the kids in the jail. And uh, while we were there, I learned about this awesome place. You may not, maybe you know about it. It's called the Shake Shack. <laughs> and they're like, they got a peanut butter chocolate shake. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and they were talking to me, so we're going. I'm like, when I, obviously, you know, I eat well. And what I'm saying is, <laughs> I was so excited, we're driving to this place and I just got it in my head, you could tell I'm really energetic. So I start singing to myself, where we going, Shake Shack? Who's going, we're going, where we going, Shake Shack? <laughs> so the next thing you know is we're driving down the strip in Las Vegas, we got the cars next to us doing, where we going, Shake Shack? Who's, <laughs> so I wanna do it with you, can I do that with you guys? <laughs> so I say, where we going, you say Shake Shack. When I say, who's going, you say, we're going. And I'm gonna say, where are we going? You say, Shake Shack. Can y'all handle that? <laughs> All right, here we go. I want you loud and proud. Where are we going? Shake Shack. Who's going? We're going. Where are we going? Shake Shack. Who's paying? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get out of here pretty quick, but l let me tell you this. Where I work, I, I actually, I am from Denver, Colorado, but I grew up, uh, and I am from originally Boulder, Colorado, which is right up against the mountains, right? Mmm. <laughs> Any other buffs in here tonight? See you buffs? Let's go buffs. All right, enough. Uh, <laughs> where I work, people do a lot of crazy stuff like climb mountains, and then they don't know how to get back down. <laughs> so then I get there, I'm like, what do you want me to do? Does it actually look like I've been up a mountain? <laughs> they start yelling at me, I'm like, no sir, you cannot jump down on top of me. What? No, I'm not actually inflatable. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, sir. Is that your Subaru in the parking lot? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Vinny Montez. God bless you guys. <laughs>